What's up YouTube? Today we are back for another video and back by popular demand we are joined with my wife Andriana again. Today we're going to be talking about volunteer and shadowing experience for pre-meds and pre-PAs. So let's get into it. Hit it. Today's video is sponsored by my good friends at Motivate MD. For those of you who will be applying to med school and PA school and looking to improve their personal statement, Motivate MD has an amazing personal statement review service that's customized for every single person at a price point students can actually afford. I can't express to you how badly I wish I had this service when I was in med school because I sent my personal statement to so many people to review that really had nothing to do with medicine. The goal is to get as many eyes on your personal statement as possible, and it's even better when those people know exactly what they're talking about and do this for a living. After all, your personal statement is a major component of your application, and it's a chance for you to set yourself apart from everybody else. In addition to the personal statement review service, Motivate MD also has an amazing pre-med app that I've talked about in prior videos. There are a ton of awesome features about this app, but the feature I like the most is the one that helps you keep track and take notes regarding all of your shadowing and volunteer experiences, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about today. So make sure you use my code Cellini20 and you'll get 20% off of everything on the Motivate MD website. Links will be in my description of this video and make sure you use that code Cellini20 to get 20% off. Now let's get back to the video. So before we get into our tips on how to obtain shadowing and volunteer experience, we figured we'd share what we did as pre-meds and pre-PA students. So I guess I'll start. Um, I did a couple of different things as a pre-med the first thing I did was volunteer in a level one trauma center in a large inner city hospital. For those of you who don't know what a level one trauma center is, it's essentially a hospital that gets the worst of the worst traumas. I'm talking- Gunshots, yeah, gunshots motor vehicle accidents. Gang fights, motor vehicle accidents, motorcycles, you know, construction injuries. The worst of the worst go to level one trauma centers. There's a tier from like the level one to level four being like the most non-urgent stuff. Level one's the top of the top, and that's where all the traumas go. That's all you need to know. So my main job as an ER volunteer was to basically clean the beds and get them ready for the next patient because it was a constant flow of patients coming in this inner city ER. We had to keep the stretchers clean. I've spoken about this in a few other of my videos, but as a volunteer in that ER, I was able to kind of go wherever the heck I wanted to. I would clean a few beds, and then I would venture off into the trauma bays and watch a new trauma come in, or if someone was wheeled in through a terrible motor vehicle accident or gang fight, I would just follow them to the trauma bay and just check it out. It was kind of a way for me to be exposed to a ton of different facets of medicine and really with no real direction. I could kind of just do what I wanted. So I was able to be exposed to a ton of different stuff while working in the ER. I would actually go there about once or twice a week and sometimes on a Saturday night because that was when everything went down. The other thing I did as a pre-med was shadow a neurosurgeon. It was a neurosurgeon at a local hospital near my house, and he focused mainly on spine surgery. He allowed me to shadow him in pretty much any OR day he went into, and I could see any surgery I wanted to. It was a fantastic experience. So those were my experiences as a pre-med. Now it's time to get over to Andriana's experiences. Alrighty, so I also did two experiences, but as you all know, I had a unique situation where I did PA school and undergrad all in four years. I went to St. John's University. Um, everyone has been asking, so that's where I went. It's located in Queens, New York. Um, so if you know that you're going to be a PA in high school, then apply there. And by the way, this is a Queens, New York accent, not Staten Island, like some of you guys are saying. <laughs> So um, despite me going to that combined program, they still required the actual shadowing experience before entering the PA school part, which is the last two years of your college. So for my first experience, I was working as a therapeutic activity assistant in a children's hospital local that was local in my area. And there I was working with the outpatient children, but I was able to shadow a PA in the inpatient unit. Um, and there I pretty much worked with all children with mental and physical disabilities and it was truly inspiring. 
So my second experience was that I shadowed a PA at a local radiology suite there. I observed her react to any allergic reactions that patients had to the contrast and um, she had a really flexible schedule which was kind of nice and that's kind of what I liked. Yeah, for, you, for those of you who don't know, anytime there are MRI or CT scanners running in the hospital, there always has to be a provider, whether it be a PA, nurse practitioner, or doctor on site, because there's always that 1% chance that there could be a reaction or an anaphylactic reaction in which you would need a provider right nearby. Right. And then I also got to just observe the radiologist. Um, read the studies and they were explaining what each study does kind of like what you do to your for, for your students yeah. Yeah. so so now we're going to get into the portion of the video where we give you guys tips on how to gain shadowing and volunteer experience so our first tip is to just ask it seems simple but everybody knows a doctor or a PA they grew up with all you have to do is just ask them if you have a primary physician which you do a pediatrician just ask them and if you ask them in person, chances are they're probably going to say yes. Yep, my brother's friend's wife was a PA, and that's how I landed one of my PA shadowing experiences. So really simple, small world, someone is always in the medical field. Yeah, you always have a family member or a family member or a friend of a family member who's a doctor or something. There's a lot of us out there, there's a lot of PAs out there. Just ask. Someone knows somebody, and I guarantee they'll help you out. Yeah, as long as um, the place is a, the place does allow volunteers, because there's a lot of HIPAA violations. So as long as the place allows volunteers, you're good to go. Our second tip we have is to ask your peers and friends around you, because everybody is in the same boat as you. Mm -hmm. You're all pre meds. You're all pre PA students. So just ask your friends around you. See where they're going to go shadow. See where they're going to get their hours, whether it be a friend that they may know or the friend that they may have. That's actually how I found the spot with the neurosurgeon I worked with because one of the pre-med students that was in some of my chemistry classes actually kind of set me up with this person. I was asking him what he's doing to help his med school application and he told me he was shadowing this neurosurgeon and he actually gave me his email address, told the doctor and kind of set it up for me and helped me out a lot. Nice. Yeah. So it worked out. So just ask your friends. Everybody's doing the same thing as you. So just ask. Our third tip is to call and email all local hospital volunteer services. That's all they do. They set pre-PA and pre-med students with volunteer work. Um, I know lots of urgent cares and lots of hospitals have medical scribes that you could actually get paid to do. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, a lot of the websites for your local hospitals will actually list the section where it says like volunteer services somewhere towards the bottom or whatever. Just email blast them or call them during business hours. Just tell them you're a pre-med or pre-PA student and you want to volunteer and they'll set you up with what path to get there. I know my urgent care, at one point they were doing the pre-PA students who were interested in shadowing a PA. You just had to go through the human resources just to make sure everything was HIPAA compliant. But there are a lot of opportunities out there. Yeah, it's kind of a pain to go through all the paperwork and everything, but once you go through that initial process, you're pretty much in and you can kind of volunteer wherever you want in the hospital. Our fourth tip is kind of a tip, but it's kind of what happens once you get all this experience going. So once you are shadowing or working with a physician, oftentimes you'll be approached by their friends or colleagues and ask you if you want to shadow them as well. So for instance, when I was working with that neurosurgeon, one of his urologist buddies came up to me in the OR one time and asked me if I wanted to see one of his surgeries. And I literally just walked next door to the OR next to him and watched him. So it's, that's kind of how it works out. Same for me. I was in the outpatient program. I worked a few times in the inpatient program, came across the PA, and I was asked to shadow her. And that's how I made my connection there, to be able to shadow a PA in the inpatient unit. Yeah, so it's all about FaceTime. The more you're in the hospital and working with these clinicians and physicians, the more offers you get. So that concludes this video on pre-med and pre-PA shadowing and volunteer experience and our tips that I hope help you guys. If you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment below or if you want to see more of my wife and Joanna, let me know as well. Otherwise, go smash that like and subscribe button and follow Dr. Cellini on Instagram right here. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll see you on our next video. <laughs> 
no, no. I had to, as you know, about the unique ex take two. Let's do that again. So I was there to clean the beds and get it ready. Started from the bottom, now you're here. Okay. <laughs> you ruined that bit. Take four. What? What am I talking about? <laughs> what?